Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to show you my May wrap up. Uh, I'm going to show the books that I read throughout the month, the books that I'm currently reading and then the movies that I saw. Um, in this May wrap up I didn't watch any series so that's why I didn't mention it. So, beginning with the books that I read, <sighs> I finished this month the, the God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. So, this was supposed to be finished in April, but I'm going to mention it in here because the video only came out in May. So, you know, there you go. I made a whole video about the book, so I'm not, and this wasn't supposed to be here, so I'm not going to talk about it. If you are curious, as I was about the title, please go watch my video about it. Then I read the three, the three. The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldridge by Philip K. Dick. This is a science fiction book. This is also... this. I made a video also about this one. Um, I love this book. Um, this is... This has voyages to Mars, voyages to other solar systems, extraterrestrials trying to supposedly get control of Earth and um, an industrial that got, that went to that said system and stayed there for 10 years and then appears in the solar system uh, like of nowhere and no one knows why but apparently he brought with him some lichens that are threatening the business of another industrial or another businessman that has some illegal business uh, in Mars. He's selling candy, so a drug. And so this other guy, Palmer Eldridge, who who came back to the solar system, he's now commercializing a new drug, Shio Z. And so we have here then these two men trying to trying to figure out to figure out which has more strength and more connects and more influence to make their drug allowed legally. And so Either drug has a condition that comes with it if you take it. So, and then by the, the title, the, the, three, the three stigmata, we have here um, three things that are surrounding the physical appearance of Palmer Eldridge that appears in the illusions of some characters, of some of the main characters in this book and that will in a way flag if they are having, if they are still under the influence of the drug or if they are in reality. So, and till the end you are not sure. So great, go and read it. Then I started and finished the Copenhagen Trilogy by Tove Ditlevsen. This is a Danish uh, author. Um, this is an autobiography. This is composed, this is a compilation of three books, Childhood, Youth, and dependency and I also made a video about this book if you are interested please go watch it um, 
and uh, I also love this one so this month this month although I read so few books but it was really um, a good month for me this one is all about Tove growing up her relationship with her mother and with her father and also with her older brother then the relationship that she had with some friends few friends that she had growing up people that she met the first time that she got a job what happened uh, the first time she got in a relationship uh, advice that she was given by older people saying that she had to arrange a marriage with a, a man with a stable job but it was far away from the desires of Tove because she wanted to be a published writer she didn't care about having a, a husband with a stable job um, then we get her uh, account on her marriages and how she met someone that would after that um, become the the source of the drug that addicts her and you will get all the context how she got to the drug first and it was like one time one sensation that she had of happiness and relief and feeling good that it was a feeling that she never had felt before and after that she got so hooked that she didn't want to part with a man that could give her that and so in that point it began the roller coaster of her life and how she got to be an addict then it talks about her rehabilitation and how when she got um, again to the world it was difficult because she, because she had temptations all over and her relapses and finding love after an addiction art is so beautiful um, and I think it's so important this was something that I said in my Instagram post I think it's so important to read about other people experiences and other people realities to get out of your little box you know get out of your small surroundings and see the world with other eyes and see other experiences and other paths of life and you know learn something from it and get to know someone and also reflect on your own life and perhaps identify with some things with the person you are reading about so it's also important to be reflected and be and identify similarities and say yeah I'm like that as well and you know in her case she got to be an addict and so her experience and her storytelling about it it's important so you also can identify where she was at fault and where other people were at fault and even perhaps for you to avoid that and to try to remember this as a warning to not do the same so so important in my perspective at least I think it's so important to get the gist of other ways of life so very interesting so now the books that I'm currently reading I'm for for June so I'm filming this in June second June the, the second and I'm 
I begin, I begin, no, I pick up where I stopped. <laughs> and so, because I was reading the Les Miserables by Victor Hugo uh, in English, but I, well, I read very far in English because I didn't have bought a, a copy by, for myself in Portuguese. It came an opportunity to buy the volumes in Portuguese and so I bought them. And so now I'm finishing the reading um, in Portuguese. So this is volume two and I'm, I have this chunk to read. It's like 200 and something pages. So I think it will be easy for me to read till the end of June. And you know, I have to say, well, I don't know if I want to talk about it too much because I'm going to do a video about it, about this book. And maybe there I say the things that I want to say. So I'm reading Les Miserables. I'm also reading The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky. I have to say that I didn't pick this one up so much. These past few weeks, I'm still in volume one. So in my Portuguese edition, they are divided in two volumes and I'm still in volume one. I thought that I was more far, far. let me see. Oh yes, okay, then what is it? What this is, what is it? No, it just, okay, I'm here. <laughs> so I'm, uh, um, I just have, let me see. 85, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pages to finish volume one and then I can go to volume two and then in July we are going to talk about uh, the brothers Karamazov. Ah, I, I didn't say, but Les Miserables is my book for June for that challenge, 12 books for 2023. And The Brothers Karamazov is my July, right? July book for 12 books for 12, 12 months of 2023. And then I'm also reading Guns, Germs and Steel by Jared Diamond. And this one is my August book for 12 books for 12 months of 2023. And um, I'm trying to get ahead. You, you're getting what is happening here. So yeah, I'm, this one I'm, I'm, <laughs> really in the, in the introduction still. So I'm on page 30, so. But it is something, right? Okay, so yeah. And then about the movies, I watched Sharper, a movie that came out this year by Apple TV. This movie is with Julianne Moore, Sebastian Stan, John Lithgow, and you know, that's maybe the most known actors. I, I became curious because the cast was with Julianne Moore and I love Julianne Moore. Um, and I thought that the trailer was intriguing. So I went and, saw, and watched it. And this is about a coup. The thing that I, I found uh, interesting in this movie was that the movie is divided in chapters. So each chapter is, is for, for a character, a main character. And we begin the movie with Tom. 
so the son of a billionaire and he has a, a bookshop comes in a young woman um, that is there looking for a particular book and he gets the book for her and so he we don't he, he doesn't we don't know what he's thinking but we can guess that is, he found her very beautiful and very interesting because um, she, is, she is taking her PhD and she is now working on, a, on her thesis and you know they talk a bit and so he asked her to go out with him in a place that he knew and she says, no, I'm single, but I don't want to be with anyone right now, blah, blah, blah. And then she, have, she hasn't the money to pay. And he says that she can take the book and pay later. And so she goes away. And then when he's closing the, cho the shop, she comes back with the money and they say goodbye to each other but then she goes back and she says remember when you asked me if i wanted to go out with you you know and they go and they talk about books they say so um his mother died uh recently i suppose not maybe not recently a few years ago but he's still in grief uh, then she told him that she and he, her brother were orphans very early in their lives and so they got to foster they got in foster houses very frequently and she says to him that uh, in one of the houses she they they had um, a, a shelf with books um, and she picked up Jane Eyre and it was the first time that she read in a book someone that was passing through what she was passing through and he went they went back to the shop or his shop um, and he showed her a first edition Jane Eyre and they kiss there and so on and so forth you know cute but then things turn around and the further you go you go in the movie and the characters you get to meet you understand that not everything is a what it seems to be and then you have plot twists surrounding plot twists in you have people climbing the social ladder or trying to and then you you think that someone is playing a coup in someone and then maybe the people that were playing the, the coup were play the coup as well so is this a spoiler i hope not <laughs> it doesn't take any way um anything away from the movie because you know you get to a point where some things that happen you at least was my thinking um i thought that perhaps if they were so clever, they wouldn't do the things that they did or some things that they did the way they did it. Okay. Um, and then it gets to a point that you perhaps start to guess what is going to happen. At least for me, I start to think in a way that the movie was going in a certain way 
but then something happened and I discarded it but then at the end it was what I was thinking so it's an entertaining movie it's not a fantastic original never seen before or anything but you know it's entertaining it's a movie to entertain and you achieve that seeing or watching this movie so I advise it to go and see it then I saw another movie that it was like in a chance because I was watching I was doing something in my computer and the TV was on and then it started to it start I I passed uh, I zapped uh, through a channel and it was um, playing the gladiator with Russell Crowe I love that movie and I saw a bit of that movie then after that I left in that channel and then after that it began to to play a movie called The Man with the Iron Heart this is a movie for, from 2017 and it's based on the book HHHH by Laurent Binet I heard so many good things about this book I don't have it but I'm going to, to give you um, a picture of the, of the book so you to see and so many good things I heard about this book and I have my eye on it for a while now but I never got the opportunity to buy it and so this movie is based on this book and the book is based on real events so um, but talking about the movie the movie is, was directed by Cedric Jimenez and is with with Jason Clark as Heidrich and Rosamund Pike as Lena Heidrich or Heidrich so if you know the story or the history I should say of the Second World War you maybe you perhaps know the name Heidrich and this movie is about the, um, the plan and that was fulfilled by Czech resistance like it, this is a, a movie about a mission to assassinate Heydrich and so Heydrich was an officer in the German Navy and after beginning a relationship with Lena he is court-martialed for breaking his word to another woman he marries Lena and there is a scene in the movie where after he, get, he got expelled from the Navy he destroyed every furniture in his apartment and then Lena knocks on the door and he says he doesn't want visitors and she screams let me in and he opens the door and he's all um, uh, how, how, how do you say it? With, without the breath, like a bull uh, and she enters and she looks around and crosses her arms and it, she's like you want to marry me? or something like that be a man and he, he starts to cry and she like don't cry, be a man if you want to marry me, marry me and we're never going to talk about this again and so it was because of her because she was affiliated in the Nazi party and it was because of her that he affiliated as well so you know the influences of you know do you can see how influences how sometimes we are influenced by someone and for all the wrong reasons so he marries Lena and he follows her joining the Nazi party 
So he meets Himmler and he is appointed head of SS counterintelligence. So his job was to, to watch of other officers and other important people in the Nazi party and see if they were really truthful to the party. And if they weren't, well, you know, if you know the history, you perhaps know what I'm talking about. And so it also tells the story of the Czech resistance fighters that were trained by the Britain military and went on a mission to assassinate Heydrich. And so we have Jack O'Connell as Jan Kubis and Jack Rayner as Joseph Gab Gabik or Gabsik. I don't know how well to pronounce it, I'm so sorry. Uh, but these were the two men that were uh, flown and they went on parachutes to where Heydrich was and it was the plan of, they didn't do it alone at least the story that is told uh, in the in the movie they ended up having help but they were the main responsibles for the the mission in itself and so we then have the aftermath of the mission so they were they were uh, they were almost not successful but because he Heydrich uh, ends up dying one week, one week later meanwhile they were you know hiding but they didn't got out of the place and um, we see the aftermath of that the persecution that endured and the consequences for two, villager, two villages that had nothing to do with it, but the Nazi party linked the death of Heydrich to those villages and decimated all the men. So, you know, trying to do some good and then the response wasn't, but they were, they were expecting that. So, you know, it's, it's infuriating because this is a true story and nowadays we are facing supposedly not in this magnitude, but you know, we are facing a war in Europe and none, none of us wants that this type of circumstances get happening or get to happen again but of course many bad things are happening right now in other ways but let's hope that in some shape or form this all stops but yeah i enjoyed the movie getting back to it i enjoyed the movie um, this may, made me more curious to read the book. I really enjoy seeing Jason Clarke as Eidrich. I love this actor. For some reason, every role that he does, I think it, it gives more, more depth to it. I don't know if you agree, but I feel like that. So, yeah. So, this was my May wrap-up. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please tell me which books you read this month, if you watched any movie or any series and if you have, let me know so I can have more suggestions to get to it in the future and yeah, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to press the ring bell button to wall so you can receive all my notifications leave a like, it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And I see you on the next one.